Welcome to part two of Citizen Tools' video based on the 2013 Congressional Research Service Report titled The Federal Prison Population Buildup. As discussed in part one, the federal prison population has increased 800% since 1980. What are Congress's options for dealing with this massive growth? The CRS finds that there are two main ones, either do more of the same to enable a larger federal prison population or make policy changes to reduce the number of federal prisoners. Let's look at the first option. If no major policy changes are made, Congress could address the growing federal prison population by 1. Expanding federal prison capacity, 2. Placing more inmates in private prisons, 3. Continuing to invest in rehabilitative programs, or some combination of these three. What then would be the trade-offs of this approach? If Congress expanded the federal prison capacity or placed more inmates in private prisons, this would relieve overcrowding and create safer prison conditions but it would also require Congress and taxpayers to spend more money to accommodate the nearly 250,000 federal inmates projected for 2018. Another option would be to fund more rehabilitative programs to decrease the chance the prisoners will return to prison, or what's called recidivism. Studies of rehab programs suggest that they can be effective at reducing recidivism, which in turn could slow the growth of the federal prison population. But those programs also come at a higher cost to taxpayers and to Congress. Now here's a brief summary of the policies Congress could change to reduce the federal prison population. We urge you to go to the report for more details. First, Congress could repeal all or some of the mandatory minimum penalties of five years or more. Research by the Urban Institute found that longer sentences contributed to about half the prison population growth between 1998 and 2010. However, proponents of mandatory minimum penalties say this policy limits judicial discretion and prevents sentencing disparities. Second, Congress could repeal federal criminal statutes for some offenses. One of the reasons for the growth in the federal prison population was the federalization of offenses that were traditionally the sole jurisdiction of state governments. This especially includes crimes related to drugs and firearms. Immigration offenses, it should be noted, will always be considered federal crimes because laws related to citizenship are the jurisdiction of the federal government. Third, there are alternatives to incarceration. This can include house arrest, electronic monitoring, and intensive supervision. A majority of the evaluations found that increasing surveillance and control of offenders' activities does not, however, decrease their criminal activity. Fourth, Congress could place more inmates on probation. A common argument for probation is that it is cheaper to supervise an offender in the community than it is to incarcerate the individual. The Administrative Office of the U.S. Courts reports that the average annual cost of probation was almost $4,000 per probationer versus more than $25,000 per inmate. Fifth, Congress could consider extending the Bureau of Prisons' authority to place low-security risk inmates with short sentences directly into residential reentry centers, or halfway houses, although there is evidence that inmates escape from halfway houses and commit new offenses. Sixth, Congress could reinstate parole. Parole is one way correctional authorities can place inmates deemed low risk for recidivism in community supervision for the remainder of their sentences, but there would need to be policy changes to prevent arbitrary or unfair sentencing. Seventh, Congress could expand more good time credits. These credits reduce time for good behavior or program completion. Eighth, Congress could consider sentence reduction for inmates suffering from terminal illness or permanent physical or mental condition. These are the Congressional Research Service's policy recommendations. What would you do about the massive prison population buildup if you were in Congress? To share your thoughts, please visit Citizen Tools, where you can visit previous projects and suggest new ones, or feel free to check out one of our other videos here. Citizen Tools is a nonpartisan, nonprofit resource that provides data rich facts and analyses about economic, political, and social trade offs facing the United States.